Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be covering the solutions to the puzzles in 5D chess with multiverse time travel. And so this video is going to be split up into different sections for each of the types of puzzles. But if you want independent level solutions, then that's also posted on my channel. So starting off with Rook Tactics 1. So here we have a basic timeline. We have a Rook here, and if we move him here, you can see that we're attacking the King in the past through this line here, and that puts him in check because he can't change the past. A common theme in these puzzles is that you're trying to attack the king in the past because he can't change that outcome. He can only change the present. Oh, sorry. So in Rook Tactics 2, uh, here we have a different branch. Now rooks can also go through branches in this direction across the present. So we move this rook to here, and this directly attacks the king in this branch. And again, because it's not a present frame, the king can't move out of the way. For rook tactics 3, it's mate in 2. So in normal chess, this would be enough for a checkmate, but the king can escape through time. However, because there's two kings, um, the same setup won't work again because either this king escapes through time or this king escapes through time, but they can't both escape because they're in the same frame. And finally for Rook Tactics 4, mate in 2, uh, this forces the king to check, so he runs away. And similar to before, we're trapping both kings here with the rook, not both of them can escape. And this king can't take the rook because the rook is being covered by the rook in the lower frame through uh, time. So on to the knights. So the knights are interesting in that they have uh, not only their original chess moves, but they can also move through frames like knights too. So in this case you're moving back one frame and up two which is still a valid knight's move because moving back and moving up are perpendicular to each other. In knight tactics 2, uh, again we're attacking through time. This time by going here, and this time we're going back two frames and up one, which is still a valid knight's move. Then we're on to knight tactics 3. So. In Knight Tactics 3, we go here, and this attacks the king in the branch above because it moves up one branch and then right two. Still a valid uh, knight's move. King Knight Tactics 4. Um, here we're going back in time to attack the king. Valid checkmate because we're attacking simultaneously this king here and uh, we've also trapped this king in the top right square here. Uh, these two spaces are blocked by the knights, and then this space would be blocked by the knight in the next frame. On to knight tactics 5. here, um, we're attacking the knight in this frame of one branch, and because this is in an active frame, the knight can't move, or the king can't move out of the way. In knight tactic 6, uh, this one was the hardest for me, so you're wanting to put the king into check so that he's moving continuously, and this means that the past king can't move. Finally, by going back in time here, we're attacking two simultaneous kings. We're attacking both the king in the current timeline, as well as the king in the branch above it, which is two to the right. And on, finally onto knight tactic 7. So in this one, by moving this knight to this frame, we're attacking through time again because the knight can just jump back and up to. So 
also onto the bishop tactics. So in this first one, uh, I like to imagine bishops as bishops in the current frame, but then like rooks in between frames because they can move up one unit and then perpendicular to that unit uh, by any amount. And so in this case, um, the rook is moving up one unit and then left one unit through the frame to attack the king in the past. Similarly in this problem, uh, by moving the rook here, we're attacking the, rook, uh, the king two moves in the past. And so to move two units diagonally, you move uh, right two units and then back in time two units. And finally in bishop attacks three, by moving the king to protect the bishop, uh, the bishop is in a position to capture the king in the past. Um, however, if you don't move the king to protect the bishop, then the king can just take the bishop that fails the move. Now we're moving on to the combo attacks. So, combo attacks one. Uh, this one's fairly easy. So first you want to capture using the knight, but you can't because the king is too far away. So you use the rook to bait the king out, then move up the knight, and you're attacking the king in the past. For combo attacks two, um, this one's a little tricky. So currently you're in check because the uh, rook is capturing your king through the branches. So to prevent that, we can just move a pawn here, and this would block the rook from moving through here to the king. And finally, to attack the king, you can simply attack him through time. And this attacks him back here. Combo attacks three. Um, by moving this rook to the first available frame, we've created a new branch. And this branch is just far enough away for the pawn to be able to capture the king. And so if you think about how a pawn captures, it moves up and to the right. And so uh, because this king is up one frame and to the right one frame, it can capture the king. And because the king is, of course, in the past, then it can't be saved in this or any subsequent frames. Uh, combo attacks four. So this is like rook tactics one, where you're trying to get the rook to the top right, and this would put the king in check. And so to bait the king away from the top right corner, you move the bishop here. This forces the king to move away, and so you can go in for the kill. So onto the back rank basics. The first two are fairly easy because it's no uh, fifth dimension required. This is just regular chess. This king has nowhere to escape to because he can't go back in time. This one's a similar sort of situation. Uh, the king can't escape, and then you just capture the bishop to put him in mate. For three, uh, in this position, the king does have a way to escape to. But in doing so, he creates a situation where he has two kings vulnerable at once. And this is a big no-no because you can only save one of them per turn. And finally, in back rank basics four, this time the king has a little hidey hole. And so he's going to escape into that whenever uh, we move. So ideally, we'd like to go back to a position where there was no hidey hole to begin with. Now the king will try to escape again, but this is the same as uh, back rank basics three, where he's put two kings in danger. And then to finish the move, you have to clear all your active frames, so that doesn't matter. And now onto the queen tactics. So we have the queen, very powerful piece. And this one is just regular chess. She has nowhere to escape. To, the king has nowhere to escape to. Uh, both because, uh, in this case, this is checkmate, and because we're attacking two kings simultaneously. In this situation, uh, much like the previous one, we want to get the king to. Oh, uh, we want to get the queen to attack two kings simultaneously. And so the best way to do that is just to do that. And so the reason this is checkmate is because it's obviously checkmate in this position.
position. The king can't move away. Um, and you're also attacking the king in the past. Uh, on to queen tactics three. So pawns become queens at the back row. So by putting the queen, uh, the rightmost pawn to the top, you're able to get a queen before the king can do anything. And then we move it back here. And so this would simultaneously attack both uh, this king and It would just attack this king, sorry. Um, and because this king is in the past, you can't do anything about it. Under Queen Tactics 4, so in this case, uh, we're constantly in check. So if you don't actively put the king in check, then the knight will attack your king through time. And that's checkmate. So instead, you want to put the king in check, then move this queen back in time. Simultaneous kings, or sorry, just the just the one uh, in the branch above. Uh, this king is in, in mate, uh, but because this king is in the past, then it can't be moved out of the way. Uh, so now onto the king tactics. So kings, I figure, are a bubble, but a present king is always more powerful than a past king, and so uh, in this challenge. We want to move the king here, and then this would mean that the bubble in which the king can move is encapsulates uh, these three frames. So in, in these three frames, the kings are being attacked, uh, and because they're in the past, they can't move out of the way. So in King Tactics 2, uh, much the same, you're moving the king back here to create a branch with that in which the king could attack uh, this piece because the frame is diagonally adjacent. So now on to the opening traps. So this first one might seem uh, deceptively simple by moving the pawn here. The king is currently in check, not checkmate, uh, if you're playing regular chess, but because we're playing 2D chess, or sorry, 5D chess, um, this queen is actually attacking the past version of the king. Uh, picture the queen's movement like a star, so she can move in any direction uh, by an amount. Uh, so in each frame uh, farther back, her actions are spread out more and more. And so you're moving the queen in a position such that three frames ago she was, and she would be uh, three uh, units away from the king. In opening traps two, uh, we're exploring the same sort of idea, except on the diagonal. So by having the queen here three moves ago, uh, she would have hit the king. Let's show that. So her movement cone, I guess, is growing in every frame back she goes. And in this case, it grew enough to the point where she could just attack the king in his spawn. And finally, in opening traps three, um, in this case, we want to do much the same where we can attack through time. And this particular frame looks promising because we have a queen protecting ourselves and we're right up and close with the king. However, the king can, or the queen can simply escape this fate by creating a new branch. So ideally, you'd like to get that queen to not do that. And so the best way to do that, uh, because she moved diagonally last time, you want to simply put the king in check. This forces the queen to do something about it, or another piece to do something about it. And so by moving here, you've attacked the past kings, as well as the current king. And so this means it's a mate. And finally on to tricky checkmates. So in this case, we want to put the king in a position where black pieces are uh, unavoidably 
able to prevent the king's death. So uh, to do that, we want to move our bishop here, and then the bishop will attack the king in the next frame, er, sorry, in the previous frame. And then to avoid the fate of black being able to move, move a piece, we block the pawn there, and this puts the king in checkmate. On to trick checkmates too. So in this one, uh, this sets up the knight for a next move, for in his, the next frame to attack the king here, and this bishop does much the same. So they're both attacking this past king, and so black can only prevent one of the mates. So you can either capture the knight here, or you can capture the uh, bishop with the king, but you can't do both because the two active pieces are in the same frame. And finally on to advanced branching one. So in this case we can attack the king directly here, and we don't want the king to escape to another hidey hole. So uh, to do that we just prevent that movement by going back in time and creating a branch here, in which you're attacking the king directly here. And so you like you can see 